The next stop on our hamburger journey takes us to the entertainment capital of the world. In the land of make-believe, you don't have to use your imagination to enjoy a burger the way the Fonz did. Just cruise into Bob's Big Boy in Burbank, where the fabulous 50s are alive today. There are plenty of Big Boy restaurants you can go to across the country, but there are none quite like this one. Our restaurant here was the sixth one that was built. It's the oldest one in existence today. Bob's Big Boy got its start in 1936 in Glendale, California, when fry cook Bob Wyan sold his car for $350 and opened a burger stand called Bob's Pantry. Big Boy was not the original name of the restaurant, but it was the name Bob eventually gave to his one-of-a-kind double-decker burger, which he created by customer request. The customer came in and was uh, not happy with just a one-patty burger and asked for two patties. Basically what he did, he got the bun and cut it in three pieces. He created the bottom, the center, the top, to put some mayonnaise, put the shredded lettuce, and then we get the American cheese, and then we go to get the meat, center buns, and we put mayonnaise again, get the meat, and then we put the relish, and then we put the tops, and then we put them french fries, then we put it on the bar. The Big Boy was the first commercially sold double-decker hamburger, and to this day still accounts for 25% of all sales at the Burbank restaurant. And what can I get you? Yes, ma'am, I'll have a super Big Boy combo, no relish. No relish? We sell typically 800 to 1,000 Big Boy hamburgers on an average day. It's good stuff, ma'am. It fills you up. You eat a regular burger, it doesn't quite hit the spot. But that double burger, it, it, it does it for you. This is my favorite meal. So if I'm on my deathbed, they are to bring me a big boy. <laughs> One last time. Bob's in Burbank was built in 1949. The architecture combines the counter and stools found in streamlined diners with booth seating traditionally found in coffee shops. But what draws the most attention is the big boy in the checkered pants who stands guard 24-7. We get visitors from uh, all over the world and they pose for pictures out there. That's good, put the muscles away. Kind of like when you go to Disneyland, everybody wants their picture taken. Especially kids. Kids love the big boy. Big Bob is a big hamburger. Every so often they take Bob out to refinish him, and it's a little deflating when he's not there for you to, hey Bob, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> People have stolen them over the years. Once in a while I'll see one in somebody's open garage door as I drive down a residential street. Contrary to popular belief, the inspiration for the big boy mascot wasn't founder Bob Wyan, but a portly youngster named Richard Woodruff, who Bob used to give free food to in exchange for chores. He was a chubby kid, and they got the idea that he would model for the statue. The rotund little boy who washed dishes for burgers never imagined his likeness would become the icon for a major restaurant chain, one with more than 455 big boy locations across North America. But to the regulars in Burbank, Bob's is still Bob's. Bob's is a tradition. We take care of everybody just like our family. Over the years, Bob's has been the ultimate hangout for teenagers, families, and the famous. I used to wait on Bob Hope in the drive-in about three times a week. He'd come in his Cadillac and get a shake. Tom Hanks and his wife have been in here. Drew Carey comes in four or five times a week and just reads the newspaper and has his iced tea. The Beatles came here in 1965 after a concert. They all came here and had a Bob's Big Boy. Now how cool is that? The Beatles were here. Then we got Cherry Coke? Yeah, uh, ice cream. I believe people come here to relive the past, childhood memories, teenage memories. My dad used to come when he was a teenager. In fact, he just had his 50th high school reunion here about two weeks ago. I brought my wife Kathy here for the very first date we ever had. When we decided to have our 50th anniversary, we decided, wouldn't it be great to have 200 of our friends come here for this event? It's like recreating our whole first date, which was just one of the biggest thrills we ever had in our life. Well, he brought me here when we first started dating um, because Impressive. of the car show. 
<laughs> on the Friday nights, which is really cool because the place is packed. The Road Kings Car Club uh, approached us and wanted to know if they could bring their classic cars on Friday night and we'll have 150 cars back there. There's everything here from street rods to muscle cars to ramp rods. If you like cars and hamburgers, you can't go wrong here. Friday's completely hopping. You never know who's going to show up. Jake, what kind of pressure this runs at? About 1,000 pounds. 1,000 pounds? You know, I usually come out to work. We tape The Tonight Show two miles away. And uh, it's, it's just, you never know who you're going to meet. You know, you might meet a guy who's got some car and you have no idea he's a Beverly Hills surgeon. It, it doesn't make any difference. So, oh, that's the 55 Chevy guy. Oh, that's the 54 Ford guy. You don't really know their name. This is nostalgia at its best because this is pretty much what it looked like back in the 50s, more or less. It's like a, a time warp. If you haven't lived that era, you can live it here at Bob's Big Boy.